Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to my my YouTube stream. Um, I'm assuming that you guys can hear me. So how do I know if you guys can hear me or not? Uh, this is a big deal because I'm coming to you live from a satellite feed. Okay. So um, if you guys can hear me, I'm going to need to know somehow, but I don't have a stream going uh, over here on the right. There we go. Now it's gone. Now it's coming through. Okay. So what would you guys like to know from me? I've never done this before on YouTube. I don't think I have done um, quite a few live streams in my past, but I have not actually, uh, I haven't actually done it on YouTube. So I feel like this is, this is like, this is like I'm losing my YouTube virginity or something, you know, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so I see people from all over the country. I see people from Florida and I, uh, I see people from South America. I want to say hello. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about this song that we just did. It's incredible. It's the best song ever. You know, we were um, approached by the United Nations and they were like, you know, this uh, this song might actually bring about world peace through a lot of hot girls and lingerie. And I was like, you know what? Totally get it. Totally agree. And so that's what we try to do. Um, so, uh, well, hello, Brazil. I see people in Brazil. The songwriting from the album on this different, someone is asking Alexander. It's different because we basically really tried to do something different, something with more edge, but something super diverse. Um, tried to not just kind of fall back and do like the same old types of songs that we've always done. Um, so I think we've done a really good job at like growing past kind of what we're, what's predictable with this band. So I'm not totally sure. I want to say hi to Argentina. I see Pablo from down there and I see Wisconsin and Bolivia and Mexico. This is like everywhere. You got YouTube must really have been doing well. Let me see if I can come up like this way. So I don't have to like look down at you guys. Um, okay. Also, uh, I see Ireland. Uh, I don't see any other questions yet. Why am I so pretty? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's, you got to ask the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord, Lord Vader, um, Scotland. Hello. Um, okay. So are there any questions here? You guys want me to ask it's going really quick, but I could see most people just saying hello from Utah and Arizona and Canada, UK. Let me tell you guys a little bit about, um, how we shot this video. It's kind of cool. So we actually were shooting euphoria and we shot the performance of euphoria. Um, in a warehouse where our production design team have like a warehouse full of all our lights and everything. So they told us, they, they like call us up. They're like, look, we have this whole, these, these lasers set up in the same warehouse. And if you guys want to film something with those lasers, you can do it for the same video. And we saw it and we were basically like, Oh shit. Like maybe we, um, maybe we do it in a completely different, like, like video, you know? And so that's kind of what we did. So we, we came up with a whole nother concept and, and did that. So we actually shot two performances on the same day. But what's cool about the lasers is that the idea wasn't just like lasers. It was the fact that like if you change the shutter speed on the camera, the lasers like freeze in midair and create these geometric patterns. It's actually a trick of the camera more so than the lasers themselves. Um, the girls in the underwear wasn't really a trick of the camera. That was real. It was real cool. So I'm just saying, you know. But um, any case, we see Columbia. Columbia is here. Do we have uh, an extraterrestrial theme? Okay, so the theme of the record is called life forms. Okay, most people think of like life forms as like, you know, you and I, and and how we interact with each other from like, you know, relationships and school and friends and work and whatever. And we kind we we kind of tend to think that's the only thing out there, but it's not, as you know. And so the movie Monsters of California kind of picks up where the album left off. And it's kind of like goes beyond just interactions of us with each other, but also like what else is out there in the universe and how do these, these different um, forms of consciousness or lack of consciousness, how do they interact with us? Um, and what is that? And, uh, and why, what, how does all the paranormal and everything connect? So it gets really, it gets, it's really, fun and cool in, in that regard. So it's kind of like a two-part thing. Um, so a good question about the Padres, will they make it to the playoffs? They fucking better. Like I've really like put in way too much effort 
to not have that happen. And if they don't go to the playoffs, then I'm going to fucking be really pissed. But I will tell you, if we do go to the playoffs, then um, I got someone texting me over here. Just got to make sure that we're cool. If we do go to the playoffs, um, then what's going to happen is that we're going to probably have to play the Dodgers for like, you know, like a a one-off in the wild card. It's going to be crazy. Okay, so I got some other questions here. Um, it says, uh, Casey Donovan is asking, did Aaron and Alon have a lot of input on the production of Spellbound? Yes. So actually the main riff of the song Spellbound, the main electronic riff, bump, 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 whatever, it's like the main thing you hear, that actually came from Aaron. Aaron uh, was fucking around with some electronics and sent that to me. Um, and then Alon comes in and just makes it all crazy and whatever. And I'm really concentrating on like arrangement and melody. Uh, but these guys um, took it into a whole different level. Alon created this crazy EDM type bridge thing. That's uh, that's wild. Um, Erica Ardito is asking, how did you develop the idea for the video? Well, kind of went over that, like in the sense of the lasers were in the warehouse. You fuck with the camera. They look three dimensional and different and weird. Um, Adrian Quintana is asking what's the most difficult thing about doing a music video absolutely it's the time like you just don't have a time it takes a long time to film and like it's not it's it, i mean you you literally have to set up lighting and cameras and then you have to block the actors and then you have to figure out delivery and it's all shit but that's for like 30 seconds at a time and then and then you got to capture it multiple different ways so just you know it's it's really timing so the budget's really small so you got to do all that shit in like, like one day and you really need two or three days probably to do that stuff. Um, but you kind of power through it. Okay. Uh, Trace William Cohen. Um, why do the sense and spell make me feel like I'm ascending into the heavens? Well, because that's the, that's the goal. That's what we do in angels and airways. We try to make you feel like you're lifting up and go out there and conquer the world. It's like a, I don't know. It's kind of the thing that we do. I don't know. It's what we do. What we do. Okay. Uh, Chris Parlamas is going, what inspired this song? It's very different for angels. Depeche Mode. So this is like, it, the life forms on a deeper level is really me just kind of going through and like kind of celebrating all my favorite bands that I grew up listening to. And Depeche Mode was a huge one for me. Before I got into all the punk rock stuff, I was like really into New Order and Depeche Mode and like, um, I don't know. So this was just, you know, you got to remember, I'm doing these albums for me. I'm not doing them like for my career. I'm not doing them to be giant. I really want the band to do well and be big and all that shit. That's cool. But like really, I just kind of want to see if I can celebrate the, the music that I grew up on in my own way. Um, Jamie Aykroyd, uh, what's my take on consciousness and how that links to enlightenment? I think my take is this, look, you know, you have like all these really high frequencies of unified mind light, and then they go down and get lower and lower and lower, and lower frequencies. And then all the way to dark where you have entropy and in the middle, all that light freezes and becomes physical matter. And so in that zone where physical matter is created is kind of where planets and humans are. And you can kind of tune into the dark side or the light side of the force in some ways, I guess. So my take is, is like the more you realize that everything's frequency and um, everything exists at the same place, then you can start to go, whoa, I can really work that muscle in my mind and get into meditation and all these cool things. And, uh, you know, start to change your life. Not so much like, oh, I'm meditating and like things change, but you have to understand you are just a radio receiver. So you got to tune in to consciousness. And if you don't, then you're going to be stuck on the freeway and hate your job and can't get home and yelling at people and have a really boring fucking life. That's kind of my point. Okay. So any case, Tom Rawlings, how come you guys weren't in uh, our underwear in the video? It's a really good question. Um, so if we were to not be completely clothed in the Spellbound video, there would have been a really good chance that um, our bodies would have been distracting. Like you would have gotten really turned on. Like it would have been really gnarly. Like physically, your bodies would react to seeing our bodies. So our bodies 
do things to your bodies and we kind of want to get to know you first. Like we want to go to dinner. We want to kind of see like, you know, do we want your body to react to our bodies? And like, that's really the reason. So we just feel like there's no way we're going to let our bodies do something to your bodies. If we haven't even had a chance to talk to you and get to know you and like really feel like where your heart's coming from, you know? All right. I don't know. Okay. Andrew. What was I listening to when we wrote this record? Um, a lot of punk rock, like just punk. I went right back to punk stuff this whole year. A lot of like Bouncing Souls and The Descendants, um, a lot of the Queers and Screeching Weasel stuff, a lot of, um, you know, Propagandi for some reason came back into my my brain. Um, a lot of no effects as usual. I just went back and did all the classic stiff little fingers. I don't know. That's I somehow that seemed really fresh to me because I haven't heard it the way I heard it this year. I haven't heard it in a long time. Um, how do we get that bass sound on losing my mind? Uh, that's a good question. Um, probably cut out the lows and the highs, a little bit more mid-range on the bass guitar through a distortion pedal. Lightly distorted. That's probably how. So that's for that's for Jordan Persons. Kayleen, why did we choose the name Angels and Airways? Intention, soaring. Intention, love, move on, make the world a better place. Add in a few dick jokes along the way. All right. Uh, Matthew Herzberg is saying, uh, what kept you sane during the pandemic? <sighs> Probably like everyone else, like movies and stuff, like movies. And um, I got to make my movie, so I got to concentrate on creating. I think as long as I'm always concentrating on creating, then uh, then I'll do well. Then I'll do well, like mind, body, soul kind of stuff. Ace, uh, was the unreleased Boxcar song recorded in 2002 or recently? Uh, this song was recorded recently. So Travis and I actually did record a Boxcar Racer song over the past couple of years. It's like sitting there and we want to like finish it. But a lot of it's been like this record and everything I'm doing, I haven't had a chance to really like focus on it um, and finish it. He wants to put it out. Um, and so it's really my fault at this point, but it's only because I have all this stuff going on. So I can't really like do 80 things at once, even though it seems like I'm always doing 80 things at once. I don't know. Um, Milo, any favorite albums of this year? Hmm. Hmm. You know what? I'm the wrong guy to ask for that. I'm kind of like this Pandora playlist guy. I'm not like searching out brand new records. Um, not because I don't believe in them. I just fucking did one, but like, God, if I'm making one, I can't really be finding one. You know, I'm not really the quickest on new music. I like what I like, but I spend way more time trying to create. Um, all right. Uh, Scott Kula, how do you order your steak? I don't even fucking eat meat anymore, brother. I stopped. I have this real <clears throat> visceral feeling that we shouldn't be eating dead things. I think we're supposed to be eating living things like plants and shit, you know? or like a living person, a cannibalism, but not like a dead cow. No, I don't know. But when I did eat meat, and I still eat fish, and I will eat meat if I have to. But when I think about where it comes from, I'm like, ah, it's kind of gross. Um, medium well. Because I don't want to see the blood. I don't want it on a bone. I don't want ligaments and all that shit. So, but I don't even eat it anymore. So fuck, what do you want me to say? All right, uh, Chris Hemrick. Can we get an Empire Acoustic set? God, I would love to, but then it's like rehearsals and working things through and touring. And it's just like, that takes up months of time just to do something cool. It's like, oh, I would do that for something cool, but it has to be something like, I have so little time. It just have to be something that's like super priority, you know? Um, Matt, uh, DDA, I'm assuming that's how you say your name, DDR. Do you feel vindicated uh, now that CIA released those UFO documents? Uh, no, I don't. I, I mean, I do. I mean, I kind of do feel vindicated, but like, this is what I knew was going to happen, expected to happen. I'm part of like a group of people that are really getting some wild shit done. So I'm not really thinking it's about me and my ego and being vindicated. It's literally like I kind of worked on a process with these guys and it's happening. So I knew that this would come. So I wasn't like, oh, my God, finally, it was like, no, like this is all part of uh our plan to inform people as much as we can. Um, 
Daniel, Roger, uh, what's the plan to release the album in 2020 pre-pandemic? Yeah, we were. We were planning on releasing the record before the pandemic. Um, and then the fucking pandemic hit. And then uh, then we like went back in and worked on it some more, made the movie, came back out. So I think, um, but I do think that, that pausing, I think pausing uh, and working on it longer was really cool. It made the record like way better. You know, I, I think I worked harder on it. You know, what's cool about this. I'm talking as though there's someone here. There's no one fucking here. Like, it, well, you guys are here, but where I am like right here, like there's nobody here. So if there's people back over here, cause it's a hotel, then they, they think I'm like sitting with people talking, but I'm not for all they know. If they walk by, I'm kind of just like a weirdo, but I do have earphones in. So maybe they'll think like, okay, you know, Oh, there's someone there. Um, uh, Byron Scott, are we stars when we die? I don't think so. I don't think that we're stars. I mean, I'll always be a rock star, but I just don't think that everyone's a rock star All right, as a joke. Okay. Um, Joe Chris, what's the plan for Angels and Airwaves after Life Forms and the tour? Will we be getting music once in a while? Oh, yeah. Angels will always be making music and doing stuff. <clears throat> my um, my goal was like to do a little bit less stuff, but make the stuff we do better and more ambitious. So we'll always be doing stuff, but hopefully we'll be doing better kind of stuff. Um, Baron Von Bielski, you uploaded a song to Instagram with lyrics. The crowd's getting angry. They're sick of the blank. Is that on the album? That sound of the crowd's getting angry. They're sick of the show. The real bit dangerous. Yeah, that song's rad. It's punk rock, super fast. It did not make the record, um, but it might still come out at a different time. We're gonna we're talking about putting out some more music um, with this record, even more like later. So we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Um, Persona. You look happy these days. Did that affect the way you wrote this album? Oh, well, that was really fucking nice. I am happy. I'm really happy in my life. This is like the best version of me you guys have probably ever seen. Like I'm doing all these really cool things. I'm surrounded by a lot of cool people. I have a, an amazing wife and my family's doing good. It's been a rough few years with that big old change in my life. But um, that makes me feel good. Thank you. Like, like I want to, I want to, I want to look happy, you know? Okay. Who else we got? Kevin DeBoer. Boer. Kevin DeBoer. Boer. Is there an ongoing story with the girl and the fly tattoo returning in every video? Um, basically, I thought it would be really cool to use Brittany, that model. She's a friend of ours a lot just because familiar face. And I thought it'd be kind of interesting and different. Um, some of it ties together. Some of it doesn't. But I'm not going to lead you down any specific roads just yet. Our Lady of Beasts, are there any insights on the lyrics in the second half of Spellbound? Um, not really. I mean, it's really just about, Spellbound's really just about um, the feeling a boy has when there's a really pretty girl and your heart is like going to be fucking crushed. That's why we call it crush. When, you're, when you have a crush, it's like your heart's being crushed. But they also tell you if you don't wear a support cup in sports, your dick might get crushed. So if you have a crush, it could be like for a girl, but it can also be your genitals got crushed. But so we just got to be really careful about that and have that distinction. Right. All right. Oh, OK. So um, we have a tour here coming up in a couple of weeks. I hope all you guys have um, gotten your tickets and you're coming. We're also going to Europe in March um, and we're going to uh, have an incredible tour in Europe and the U.S. And we're going to start building, 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 building. We're going to release this movie next too. And hopefully you guys will go deeper and deeper into the whole Life Forms project. Okay. Um, I'm really happy that you guys are here. I'm really thankful that you guys are uh, supporting the things I do even after all these years. Um, long live skateboarding, punk rock music, and uh, dick jokes. And I think you blend all that together. And then you have someone searching and yearning for a better life. Go illuminate that mind of yours. And um, I'm thinking I'm thinking you need to hydrate and moisturize your skin. That's the last thing I'm going to say. Find something really moisturizing and put it all over your body. Make sure your skin is moist. Make sure your skin's moist. <laughs>